Hey, it's Mr. K doing a problem for AP Physics 1. This is a 12.25 minute problem. Uh, deals with some rotations. Some amount of centripetal force would have to be considered here because things are moving in a circle. And we'll see whenever that comes into play later on. Do not let the graph freak you out. It's pretty easy to understand once you know what it's talking about. Let me go ahead and read this problem before you start off. So it says, a passenger compartment of a rotating amusement park ride contains a bench on which a book of mass MB is placed as indicated by the dot in the left figure above, so right down there. The compartment moves with a constant angular speed about the center of the ride along a circular path of radius r, so it goes around and around and around and around, and the bench remains horizontal throughout the compartment's motion. The right figure above shows a magnified view of the compartment, and the graph below shows the horizontal component of the book's position as a function of time where the x direction is to the right. So this graph shows horizontal motion, so in other words, this kind of motion as the book goes around in this ride. So although the ride is going around in a circle, if we only took the horizontal motion, it's going to be doing this. And if we graph that out versus time, it's probably easier to look at it like this. And so that same motion is going by time and it's going to be repeating itself. So the first question that we need to cover is to determine the period of revolution of one book. And so you need to know the definition of a period. A period is how long it takes for the whole process to repeat itself. And so if our process starts at zero, that means that it's going to be whenever it comes back to zero, but going back in the same way. So it's not here. It's actually going to be down here. So what I, what I mean by this is as this thing goes around and comes back to its original spot, yeah, it does pass through the zero mark up here as well but it doesn't pass through at this in the same way, it's actually gonna be down here whenever it fully repeats itself one full period. So we're gonna be moving to the left, which is negative, go down, we're gonna be moving back to the right, which is, which is gonna be over here, and then we're gonna be going all the way to the right and back to the left, and that's gonna be right here as far as the period's concerned. So if I look at the graph, my time is gonna be in seconds on the bottom, so here's 100 seconds, and it looks like we have spacings of one, two, three, four, and five, so if I divide 100 by five, I get 20. So this is gonna be about 120 seconds or two minutes. So the period is gonna, and it's a determined, so really all I need to do is just put down the answer is 120 seconds or it's going to be about two minutes all right and i might use that later we'll see where and when now part two says calculate the tangential speed and not the angular speed of the book so let's see how do we calculate the tangential speed of the book that means that we are going and finding the velocity at any point or the speed at any point and really what we need to do is we need to look back at the definition of velocity or speed, which is going to be how far you go, or some kind of distance, divided by some kind of time, and that's where our period is going to become important. And then if we give direction, that'll become velocity straight up. So without direction, we'll just have speed. So how far does it go and how long it takes? Well, we know how long it takes in, in order to get all the way around. That's going to be 120 seconds or two minutes. Uh, but how far does it go is going to be the circle. And so does it give us any information about how big this circle is? And not in the picture, but we definitely have that information here in the graph. And if we notice, we go from 0 to negative 30 all the way back to 0, back to positive 30. And what this tells me is that I am at 0 here. I'm going to go to negative 30, and I'm going to go back to 0, and then all the way to positive 30 on my x-axis. That means the radius is going to be 30. So as far as distance goes, I know I'm going to go a full circle. So circle is going to be 2 pi r. And then I'm going to take the time and divide by that. So all I need is the radius, and that's going to be from 0 to the outer edge. And that's going to be 2 pi. The radius was 30. And we'll divide that by 120 seconds. So to do this without using the calculator too much, we'll take 2 and 30. We'll put those together. We have pi. 2 and 30 is going to be 60. And we'll divide that by 120. Do a little bit more non-calculator math. That zero can go away, that zero can go away. Six over 12 is gonna be one half. And so that's gonna be pi divided by two, All right? And so that should be your answer there. Let me just double check as far as the scoring guidelines and anything else that we need. And it says for using the correct radius of 30 found in the graph, that's one point. For substituting the period, blah, 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 blah. And getting all those answers, that would be all good. So pi over two is acceptable. Uh, but we would have to put in the meters per second, even though there is no point for that. That's good right there. So pi over 2, 
um, meters per second. If you wanted to give them a decimal, you could as well. That would be fair. They'll take either one. So let's go ahead and go over here to part B. Let's try to keep this paper on the side just so we can see what we're working with. It says, on the dot below, which represents the book, draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the book at the lowest point of its circular path. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. A lot of y'all are going to have to screw this up by just drawing your own dot. Use, use their dot. All right. And so let's look at the forces on this book at the bottom of this ride. And so we know there are definitely two forces on it. There's definitely going to be the force of gravity pointing down. There's definitely going to be the normal force pointing up. The big question that we need to answer is, are those forces equal to each other and in opposite directions? Um, and the answer is no, because we need to remember that this thing is moving in a circle. And in order for it to move in a circle, we need to have this thing called centripetal acceleration or centripetal force to help it move in that circle. And so that force is always going to be pointed towards the center of the circle. Here at the bottom, it's going to be pointed up. At the side, it should be pointed to the right. So it's probably going to be like some friction there. At the top, it'll be pointed down. It'll be some part of gravity. Normal force would lessen in order for that to happen. And on the right side, it'll be friction pointed to the left. So at the bottom, we definitely will have a force of gravity. I'm going to use half an inch to represent that. And we're going to label that as Fg, or you can use M. BG, I guess that's, that was the case here, right? MB. And then we're going to have a force going upwards that should be a little bit longer than that force of gravity. So I'm going to use about a half inch plus another half of a half an inch or a fourth of an inch. And uh, that's going to be my normal force. And so that normal force is going to take care of that part. That excess right there is going to take care of that centripetal force need in order for us to move in a circle. So don't forget that. And I believe that was three points right there. Yeah, for correctly drawn and labeled normal force, that's one point. For correctly drawn and labeled gravitational force, that is one point. So if you just draw those two forces, you're good. And then for drawing no extraneous forces, that at, with at least one force drawn, that's in the other point. And we need to make sure that that normal force is bigger than that gravitational force. I'm not sure if they really give a point for that. But correctly drawn normal force would be that point. That, that would be it. All right. <clears throat> So at the lowest point, the circular path, the book is moving only in the horizontal direction. In what direction, if any, is a net vertical force on the book? And so as we, if we can just use our free body diagram, if we did it right, the net vertical force on the book should be upwards. Okay. And then we got to actually explain why. So in order for us to get the full points here, we need to utilize our understanding that, that helped us make this free body diagram. Well, we know that if it's not moving, that the sum of all forces should cancel out. But because it's moving, the sum of all forces in the vertical direction should be equal to our centripetal force. Or it should be equal to, well, we can just say FC. We're really not using that very much right here. That's going to be equal to normal force in that direction minus my mg. And because we need to have this excess pointing up, then we need to have the net force in that direction as well. So the points here come from an explicit or implicit assertion based on forces. And that's that's it. <laughs> oh, I thought there were more points here. All right. So you would just say in, in a simple sentence, um, normal force must exceed mg. Because the object is still moving in a circle. Yeah, let's see right there. Requiring centripetal force. Wow, that's messy. Um, and then you'd say, you know, you, you can even elaborate on that more. It's only one point, but as long as you say that normal force must exceed mg because, yeah, the object is moving in a circle, we need more force pointing towards the center. Part C. Part C is worth, let me see here, three points. And it says, drive an algebraic expression for the vertical force that, ex that the bench exerts on the book at the lowest point. And that's kind of what we started here. And so we need to put it in terms of the book's mass, the tangential speed, VB, the radius R, the path, and the physical constants like G as appropriate. Do not substitute any numeric values for the variables 
So a lot of trouble with that. Don't substitute any numerical values in. Leave everything as your variables instead of putting in numbers like, you know, 3.14 for pi or 9.8 or 10 for g. All right, so just going back here, derive an algebraic expression. We're going to go from the very basics. We're looking for forces. And so if we are looking for forces, we need to do the sum of all forces. I'm just going to rewrite it. So we must do a sum of all forces. And that sum of all forces must be equal to ma. And in particular, in this case, we know that acceleration needs to be centripetal acceleration because there is no tangential acceleration. This thing's not speeding up as it goes around in a circle. It's just turning, so we got to have that turning force. So that's going to be m centripetal, or the ma centripetal. And uh, the forces that are involved are just like we said, the normal force minus mg. mg goes the other way. Okay, and so it says, hey, we need to answer with mass of the book. Um, so MB is going to be right there. We need to answer with tangential speed, VB, that we haven't used that yet, and then the radius R. And so we need the vertical force that the bench exerts on the book. So we really need this, for this normal force. I'm going to go ahead and solve for it by saying normal force, move this stuff over, is equal to the mass of the book times the centripetal acceleration. That's going to be V squared over R, that's where these other things come into play. So R is capital R, V is actually gonna be VB, and then we have the MG added to it. So that's gonna be MB with the G on top of that. And so that should be should be credit. Um, and and let, me, let me just double check, it says, for using Newton's second law correctly or consistent with the diagram, that's Newton's second law. Uh, for a correct expression for the centripetal acceleration, that's what we plugged in right there. And then for our final correct expression with no numbers substituted for values, that's going to be normal force yeah, is equal to and all this stuff plus force gravity. That's it right there. So we're good. So that gets us all three points. If you wanted to, you can extract the MB and you'd have, uh, let's see, you'd have MB factored out, VB squared divided by the R, and then that'll be B plus the G, gravitational acceleration on the surface of the planet Earth. All right, the last part is worth two points. It says, at the lowest point in the circular path is the force that the bench exerts on the book greater than, less than, or equal to the weight of the book. Well, based on everything we've just done, we know that the force, the normal force, is greater than that gravitational force. Now we got to support it. And so it says, briefly explain your answers in B2 and C, or how your answers in B2 and C support your selection. So in B2, how does it support my selection? Well, we said that normal force must exceed mg because the force is still moving in a circle. Okay, so that's one thing that we sh that we need to say. For the second part, well, if we look at the equation, this normal force is mg plus this other stuff right here. So those two things should help us get the point. And it says. For this part, the correct answer is greater than, got it. Uh, for a correct reasoning with a selection consistent with the answer, part two, uh, B2, that we just explained what we said in B, B2. And then for explanation why the force of the bench it must, be, must be greater based on your formula. We just said that. All right, so if we write that down, I don't want to write it down again because it just I realize it took me a while to just write that. Um, and just talking to you, explaining it, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be able to write that as well. Uh, but on the scoring guidelines, what they have written down, it says their claim is that at the lowest point of the circular path, the force that the bench exerts on the book is greater than the weight of the book. Their evidence is, yeah, the direction of the net vertical force is up. That's what we have up here uh, and right here and every, everywhere. Uh, the, book, the book exerts a vertical force of the bench of magnitude, all this stuff. And the reasoning was that the upward force exerted by the bench must be greater than the downward force in order for the net force to be upward as stated in the answer and because it's moving in a circle, which they didn't really say that, but I think that's very important to write down. So with this problem, just remember that you got something moving in a circle. You got a funny looking graph, but it's really not that extreme or outlandish to figure it out. It's just... This thing's moving in the circle. We only want to take the x direction of that, which means we're looking at this. And that is repetitive. And so that allows us to find everything else to solve this problem. All right, that'll be it.